Namaste and greetings. This is week four, and so it'll be session, uh, I don't know, what does that show me? <laughs> four would be two, eight in, oh, uh, anyways, week four, we have two sessions for you, two 30-minute approximately sessions uh, that will be uploaded on the Athens County Library YouTube site. Uh, and thank you so much, Shelby, for helping out with this and giving me some pointers on different things. Also, I wanted to thank the friends in the library, and someday we'll be back in person. And the friends are who sponsors our Yoga Over 50, or just Yoga for the Community, uh, and a host of other programs and projects. We're so fortunate with our library system. Uh, <clears throat> is well supported, well funded, and there's a a lot of folks who bring a world to Athens County, Ohio uh, from all venues and vantage points, and that's a joy of a quality library system. Uh, we're doing pretty good with our uploading of the videos. We've had a couple little technical glitches, and that's normal, so we've lost some footage. We don't know uh, if we had an introduction or not, but I repeat a lot of things throughout different classes anyway, as you all know, so that you can create your own flow of asanas. And again, asana is just the pose in yoga, and asana means, Shelby, do you remember? Taking a seat with ease. Taking a seat with ease. Shelby is a yogi. Um, so whatever flow you create, or even just whatever, gentle stretching you want to do if you only have five to 15 minutes, call it yoga. There's a whole new group or style of yoga called embodied yoga, and it really is just being in your body and using motion, somatic movement, repetitive rocking, etc., as a, as a type of, as a type of yoga. Uh, there's many types of yogas, Hatha Yoga, Angar Yoga, Vinyasana Yoga, uh, oh gosh, there's a bazillion of them. I just do yoga. I do what feels good for my body at the moment. And I've studied with Iyengar, where I started, and Hatha, oh, that was in the really early days on PBS with, uh, <laughs> I think that was the 60s or 70s. But, um, so pick a style that works for you. Be in your skin, be present, be safe and mindful. See if you can incorporate your breath. Pranayama is actually breath work or making breath move the chi throughout the body. But you can just do breath practice. Uh, pranayama is a little more advanced. So, so just be mindful of your breath. How does it move in and out of your body? What's the quality of your breath? Does it get stuck? Is there a hitch in your giddy up? Uh, is it just feel hard to get to a certain area? Is it always in your chest? Can you get it down into the basement? Uh, can you get the side ribs to open and close like bucket handles? So understanding and playing with and practicing breath can add a whole new dimension to your yoga practice. Uh, if it stresses you out, what do we need to do? Stop, don't do it. So just relax, perhaps elongate the inhalation and the exhalation, slow the worry down, and then begin again. Everything takes practice. Uh, and everything is not for everybody, so find what works for you. I'm sitting in Sukhasana, easy cross leg pose. This may not work for some people to sit, and to sit tall, so that I'm growing up like a stem of a flower out of the bowl, the pelvic bowl, or the pot of the flower. Uh, we don't want to be hunching forward. We don't want our cervical spine to be hyperextended and looking around side to side. I'm just crunching all of my viscera. I couldn't possibly get oxygen into my lungs this way and or blood moving throughout all the various organs. I think I'm stuck and I'll show you. I might need help to come back up. There we go. <laughs> so pretend like you have a little yoga angel up there, or a little yoga devil in my case, but <laughs> pulling you up. And then the, the tailbone is reaching down and out. And right through then the perineal floor, uh, 
uh, is reaching down through the center and to the earth. And that's just the area right between the anus and the genitals. It's a little zone of tissue, and it's, it's like a dome. It actually is one of the domes of your body. And drawing this energy up, it's the base or the root of the kundalini. So it's where you can bring this energy rising up. Your arches are domes. Your diaphragm is a dome. Uh, through here, uh, in the chest area, is a dome. The crown of your head, the dura mater, is a dome. So be resilient. Have these domes breathe as you breathe, and have these domes in the body become resilient. Uh, e even as the blood pulses through the veins, arteries, and capillaries, we want that resiliency of opening and closing opening and closing and the wave of life. And to keep, breath work can help keep this resiliency in the internal parts of our body as well as our external interactions with our community. One breath we're gonna start with today as we focus for a few minutes is Ujjaya breath. Uh, and Generally, in Ujjayi breath, you can sink the neck shorter, shorter, shorter. The chin rests on the, 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 the chest here. The cervical spine is open. We're just going to take a comfortable stance. And another name for Ujjayi breath is oceanic breathing. It's like if you're listening to a, a conch shell and you hear the ocean in the conch shell. Or uh, oceanic breathing. Another name for it is Darth Vader breath. If you're into Darth Vader and Star Wars, that you can hear it's like a heavy breathing, but it's sort of echoing through the openness in the chest, the throat, the tongue is down on the palate, all the sinuses and everything opens up. I I don't know if you'll be able to hear me, and we don't want it to truly sound as scary and frightening as. <laughs> Vader, but you will be able to hear the breath. And it actually has a soothing quality and can help tone the vagal nerve uh, and the sensations within the body. Again, uh, like any breath work, if it bothers you or enhances anxiety, then just breathe normally and softly. If you can, enhance the exhalation versus the inhalation. We'll just do a few cycles of this Ujjayi breath and then we'll move into a gentle flow, um, slow flow practice. Again, I have to thank my teachers. Uh, my more recent teachers have been Yen um, with Biff. Biff. <laughs> I, can't, I have to look up his last name. It's very difficult for me to say. Shame on me. Morthenton. But he's a fabulous, amazing teacher. And um, Christine Colberry Weber uh, with Subtle Yoga. And it is a slow technique really focusing on the neuroplasticity and changes that can occur with mindfulness, breath, and uh, a meditative or slow yoga. Uh, Christine is also the one who has coined the phrase, or at least I believe she coined the phrase, it's the first I heard, that the pause is as important as the pose because it brings us back into ourselves. We can explore, compare, observe sensations that happen uh, throughout doing these various asanas. And that's pretty amazing and powerful. Another powerful thing that it, it, I'd like us to focus on today, and after our series of Ujjayi breaths, we'll do five, is that I want you to set an intention for your practice today. See it, hear it, say it, even if you like. You can think things. If you verbalize the things you think, there's more act, action uh, surrounding that. And if you say it with your name involved, it even activates a greater sense of, uh, uh, I don't know what the word I want is, but anyway, it makes it happen more. Uh, so we're gonna do our Ujjayi breath. We're gonna create an intention and my intention uh, for this segment today, and we did it this morning in yoga class, yoga in the park, 
is that I'm going to find the places that feel good in my body. I'm going to focus on those for a change. Instead of the oops and the ooches and the ouches and oh, what did I do yesterday? Oh, oh, oh this hurts. I'm going to focus on what feels good in my body. And I'm going to really observe that in my mind's eye, my non-judging mind's eye. And I'm going to send those signals to the brain that, oh, this is normal. This, feeling good, is what it's all about. The other stuff, we'll work on. Okay, so sitting tall. Again, if you need to move your legs around, if you want to try your not norm, then switch your legs so that you get out of your habitual patterns. You can always move in the midst of breath work. That's fine. You taking care of yourself, making yourself comfortable is what it's all about. And keeping good posture so you can breathe. So we're going to begin with our eyes closed or looking down at the earth. Cervical spine is open like the petals of a lotus flower. So I'm not hyperextending. My chin is not up here. It is up and in. I'm gently engaging the muscles of the core of the glutes around the sits bones, the ischial tuberosities. I'm lifting. I'm lifting as much as I'm rooting. I'm going to begin my Ujjayi breath. I'm going to open the bucket handles. From the side ribs. Softly open my eyes and take in my surroundings. It opens, it shines my brain, kind of like in Kundalini when you do some of those activities. It opens the sinuses, it opens the skull plates. To me, this is a fabulous style of breathing to bring you into the present. So you might try or play around with uh, Uddiyana, uh, the Jalahara Bandha, and Ujjayu breath. So the bandhas are just locks within the body. We can talk about that at different times where we retain the lock. And this is a Jalahara bandha. And that's what's locking down when you do the oceanic breathing. So it's sealing energy in the body. And when you're done, the energy goes, <laughs> it's quite fun. Okay, terrific. So I'm going to set my intention for my practice and my practice with you for the next 20 or so minutes and then again for another 20 or so minutes is to feel what feels good in my body. I'm going to resend that positive message. Excellent. I'm going to slide out of ugh, Sukhanasana. Sukhasana. Oh, hope the bottoms of my feet are coming short. <laughs> One never knows. And stretch the legs out. Open those hamstrings again. If you have tight hams or it's hard for you to open the backs of your knees, put a prop under them. That's fine. I want to be able to sink the heels into the earth, sink the knees into the earth, lift up out of the pelvic bowl, and keep flexing the feet gently back. Dandas in the staff pose. And this is work. I'm going to lift the quads. What does that mean? I'm going to engage the quadriceps and pull them up. Yes. Perfect. I see people walking by and peeking in the room. And it was always that case in yoga, and it just makes me miss yoga in this room with all the wonderful people. Sometimes kids will come to the windows and look at all the old people in there doing yoga. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So Dandasana, this is work. So you're lifting, you're strong. I'm going to open my knees to the earth. And yin, yin yoga, the dark side of the moon. 
the subtle, the feminine side of yoga versus yang, the fast flow, strong power yoga, uh, which is not my style of yoga. Uh, we'll use props a lot so that the body feels safe unfolding into a medium. If you're constantly trying to hold on, hold on, hold on, you know, if the muscle just feels stressed or strained, but if there's something supporting it, it can find its place and feel. So use props when I'm wearing a knee. And uh, we will do some yen and some related. Yen is related but isn't restorative yoga. Uh, but they, they both have a wonderful uh, result in the body and, and a perfectly wonderful thing to do, particularly in times of stress, illness, trauma, or just is a treat. We're allowed to treat ourselves when we'd like. So the dasana staff pose. You can integrate the fingers. It gives me a little lift to the chest. Again, I'm not poking my ribs out. They want to stay down and in. Slight uh, back bend in between the scapulas of the back. I'm going to rotate my palms out. I'm going to scoop the energy of the earth coming up, up, up. I'm reaching down through my tailbone as much as I'm reaching up. I'm looking up. I'm exhaling, coming gently forward about one-third. Inhale up, look up, always lift before you twist, exhale, and the opposite hand can come to the outside of the other leg, looking backwards gently, don't overdo the twist, I'm barber pulling, I'm pulling the muscles, I'm walking the belly muscles over with every exhalation, you can even get this undulation going. Add a little belly dance into your yoga. It's a lot of fun. Inhale, lift. Always lift before you twist. Exhale, twist a little more if it's good for you. Particularly, always lift and twist gently if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia. Lift with an inhalation. Exhale slowly back to center. Feel, see, sense the changes and the shifts in the body. Look my fingertips out. Roll my palms up. Active palms. Anytime you raise the arm above the shoulder, make sure that palm is rotated up so I can slip and honestly, I can't remember if it's tendon or ligament or what, but there's an acromion process here, and it'll catch sometimes if the shoulder is rolled forward. So having the palm open and up, thumb back, allows more space to lift safely. Roll it up, and up, and we're coming down halfway. You can do it, and we're moving from the hip joints from the psoas, the hip flexor. Inhale up, lift, exhale, gentle twist. And maybe your body doesn't want to twist a lot today, so just a little twist. But let the eyes also look over. Inhale, lift, exhale, see if there's a little more. Maybe, maybe not. Slowly back to center. Pause. Take a moment. Walk those fingertips again. Hip. Palms up. Inhale up. And I'm squeezing these glutes. It's lifting me. Exhale as far forward as is possible for you. And even you will have differences every day. So whatever your body says today, maybe you want to lay your nose on your um knees. Yippee. Maybe you don't. <laughs> but try to have the spine long. You're not curving the back. The spine is long. This opens the hamstrings. Be mindful of the hamstring attachment. And you can play with your toes. Stretch them out a little bit. Oh yeah. That feels good. And, you know, I can't afford a massage very often, but Boy, a nice free foot massage, that's great. <laughs> and just let go. 
using the hands and the breath to support the torso up. Nandasana staff pose with a gentle side twist. We're going to bring one foot under and cross over. I can mirror you. And this, my top would be my left leg. My bottom would be my right leg. You have two sides, do one and then the other. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Now let's just rock a little here. Get that somatic movement happening. The pulse. And then you move within the body. Rocking is generally very soothing. Just how you need. We're going to do a gentle twist here in um, uh, Matsyandrasana. We're going to just shake out the uh, right arm, reach it up, and bring the elbow, if you can, down in behind that knee so you can lift it open. Reach the back hand behind you to give you a little lift. Find your breath. If you can find your breath in a twisted or difficult position, you can find your breath at ease. So we're going to ring out the toxins here. Inhale up. Exhale, twist a little more. There was a day when I could reach around and grab my front foot, but that ain't happening right now. It may not ever happen again, and I, I really don't care. <laughs> so do what works and is safe. If this is your twist, this is a great twist right here. Inhale, lift. Exhale, flow back to center and just relax. You might even pulse a little. You just squeezed all the blood out of the tissues and you unwound and let it rush back in. Or the interstitial fluid, or the interstitial matrix where we're now discovering so much is what's really happening in our body metabolism or in how our body works. We're gonna come here into uh, Lotus, slowly, or half lotus. <laughs> ah, and that feels pretty good. That's a stretch. The piriformis. I can feel those tight hip flexors. Full lotus is this foot would come up here. That will happen again, and that happens periodically on different days. It just depends on how my body feels. This is a big stretch. This actually feels good on my knees. And then I'm going to support it up, down, and open. Taking the blanket out from behind me, we're just going to move. Kind of, you notice the rocking theme here. <laughs> so a little somatic movement, uh, embodying the flow, the energy of the asanas. And we're just going to spiral ourselves around one direction and the other. You may or may not want a blanket under your knee, under the opposite hip, to give you a tiny bit of lift to help create symmetry in the pelvic bowl. You wear glasses, I, I feel for you. I still have to get Shelby to come out to the park one day and come on, Shelby. Everybody's waiting to be movie stars, so. <laughs> We're just adding to the comedy hours. So everybody can do yoga if my class can do yoga. So this is called rocking horse, and it's a nice way to kind of open up here. You gotta be mindful. I don't know if you've had knee replacements, hip replacements. Your doctor, depending on how the hip replacement was done, will say, oh no, that's not a great pose for you. You and your body will also know. So uh, we'll find something else for you to do if this isn't good for you, but one front hand under the front knee, back hand under the back ankle. We're just going to rock forward and back. This is in Don and Amba Stapleton's uh, Inquiry Yoga book, and that was a certification I did uh, 
through Nosara yoga where I did my advanced yoga training and we did this particular inquiry segment at Kripalu and they both used to work and run train at Kripalu. Fabulous teachers. Uh, they then moved to Nosara Yoga, Nosara Costa Rica and started Nosara Yoga which was one of the top yoga facilities for many years there. And they're exquisitely wonderful people. I uh, did my pranasage training with them, uh, a Thai yoga type training, my 500 hour yoga training with them. And it's just incredible what you learn. So there's just gentle rocking back and forth. Rocking horse, how fun is that? We're gonna go from rocking horse into a baby exploration of what cobra would be. Uh, no, pigeon, sorry, pigeon. Uh, Ekapadaraja Padanasana. Pigeon can be an advanced pose, but we can make it a comfortable pose. So we're going to just practice, and if we have bolsters, which I keep forgetting to bring, you can use multiple blankets rolled up. So if I had three blankets, it would look like a bolster. Visualize with me. <laughs> Instead, I'm just going to fold it a few times and put one of Linda's lovely buckwheat pillows on it. Maybe you'll need four pillows. That's fine. Taking a pose with ease, or taking a seat with ease. So we're going to just move through and come down, tuck it in, and just get comfy. Mm. You would stay here for a while. Yin would be two to five minutes. For our sake of time, not. You can come over the knee and explore the knee. Just however you need. So this is a different stretch, and this feels lovely. Mm. You can even put it here and drape yourself over. Keep adjusting so it's right for you, and all body parts fit somewhere carefully and nicely. This is very nurturing. It allows a twist, it allows opening in a secure, seated, supported manner. And then bring the breath wherever you need the breath to go. Draw my hands under the torso, under my shoulders, so when I come up, I have support. To come into pigeon, we're just going to roll from here to pigeon on the same side. So I'm going to lazily lay over, turn my toe under in that long back leg, and draw the knee up. I'm going to reposition myself, and then I'm going to slide back down. This is a big oblique angle for the SI joint. You may need a support underneath uh, the back uh, buttocks, that's fine. Don't overdo it. Some venues or forms of yoga will have people try to bring their uh, lower leg to a par uh, parallel position with the top of the mat. Mine, mine has never gone there. <laughs> mine will never go there. And that's just fine. I'm not an external rotator. Uh, and so this is my pigeon. And I can. It's fun to even have a big bolster and just lay over it. And it's like, oh, yes. And just keep letting go. As you let go, you can curl your toe under it, stretch it even more open. It's the perineal floor that's reaching down. But if you feel uncomfortable, you can drift over and let the hip roll down. Or just play with back and forth. Ekapadaraja Padmas. So this is a lazy pigeon, a sleeping pigeon. Drawing the hands under the shoulders, and again, I use my fist. Elbows back, shoulders down the back. Inhale, up. But we're not 
crunching the lower back, hyper, uh, uh, we're just not crunching it. We're lifting up and out in a way. So full pigeon. And then drift over onto that uh, sits bone and roll the back leg around. Stretch those legs out. We're going to do the other side here in a moment. You can come up into a little rocking motion here, inverted tabletop, a little Paschimottanasana. Feet on the earth, buttocks back to center of the mat. Roll down and take a little break. I'm going to watch my hair ties. So stretching the knees up and down, up and down. Little side to side rocking. However far feels good for you. And then take a moment, stretching out the lumbar spine and pause. That was a lot of work. That was a lot of energy on one side of the body. It's probably actually time to take a few minutes break and then we'll come back and do the other 30 minute segment. But this is called true relaxation pose. It's allowing the psoas to be soft, the hip flexors. Knees together, feet apart. Hands on belly. The neck is long. The chin is neutral. And so we'll end here for a few moments. And then I will roll up the sitting. Meet you in a few moments for the second segment. Namaste.